Hey, hey, BA fam, it's Mandy here, and I have a very, very, very special guest today. Um, I cannot wait for y'all to meet her. But before I introduce our illustrious guest, um, I want to wish, of course, my co-host, Tiffany. I hope she's having the most amazing time off during the month of March, taking some time for herself, going to Egypt of all places. And as I'm thinking of her, I'm like, she better have flown first class because... The days of economy are over for her and she needs to embrace her rich auntie life. <laughs> All right. So for those of y'all who have followed BA from the beginning, and I know we have some OGs in the audience. First of all, thank you. Because in 2014, 15, when we launched the show, we were one of like none uh, women of color, no women of color who were covering finance in the career and doing it in the way that we were doing it. Um, and for those of you who don't know the origin story of Brown Ambition podcast, Tiff and I met at a conference, became friends, and I was a reporter at the time at Yahoo Finance. And for my career, like I literally studied print journalism because they allowed me to do that in 2005, even though it was a dying industry, <laughs> or at least a rapidly changing one. And it was one of my survival tactics throughout my career to figure out these new skill sets. And so I taught myself video, taught myself broadcast, how to actually talk to a camera, which I had huge fears about. And podcasting was sort of that next chapter. And so when I thought about a show I'd want to do, Tiffany, of course, came to mind. We had such great chemistry and Brown Ambition was born. And I launched the, we launched a podcast in 2015. I remember going to Yahoo at the time. Um, I love telling, everyone loves a story where someone passed on you and then you did it anyway. <laughs> so uh, Yahoo actually said, no, we're not interested because you can't guarantee, you know, a million downloads and you can't guarantee that we're going to be able to advertise immediately and make a revenue. So thank goodness they did because of course, we went on to make the show on our own. And we to this day, fully own the IP, we own the show. Um, obviously, we have a great podcast partner um, in Westwood One, um, our, our network, but still it is our show and we are so proud of it. Um, and one of the questions I get a lot, especially from people in my career coaching group, uh, Mandy Moneymakers, is I'm thinking of starting a podcast. It feels like it's such a crowded space now. Do you have any tips for me? And I do offer all of the insights that I have, but I've only ever worked, obviously, on Brown Ambition. So I am so excited to welcome today's guest because she is someone who has become a podcast guru in her own right, has worked on multiple shows, and she is here today to talk a little bit about her journey. And I'm hoping on y'all's behalf, I'm going to ask all the juicy questions so that you feel more empowered if that's what you want to do to launch a show of your own. Because as I try to say to everyone, I still think that there's room for new voices, new ideas, everything in the podcast space. So without further ado, I want to introduce our guest, Carla Wilmaris. She is the founder of Idea to Launch Academy and the host of the Idea to Launch podcast. But before she became a podcast guru, she was like me, a corporate girly, crunching numbers behind a desk as an accountant working 40 to 60 hours per week, but then ultimately decided to make the brave and bold move to pivot, lean into new skills and become totally fulfilled in her new path. And in less than a year, Carla was able to sell out a live show, quit that corporate job, and go full-time as a podcaster. Since then, her show has amassed over a million downloads, over 100K in ad revenue. And in her business, the Idea to Launch Academy, she helps others just like herself do the same. I am so honored to welcome Carla to the BA studio. Welcome, Carla. Thank you for having me. That's Absolutely. A great introduction. I'm bringing you in my pocket everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I have an editor, so I can stop and start again. I love that. So, some of the Don't shows that, that you've worked on, <laughs> some of the shows you've worked on, y'all might have heard of the No For Sure podcast, Holding Court, Not Just Another Sex podcast, Powered AF. But take us back to your journey, you know, as a podcaster and what year did you really get your start? And when did you start to realize, okay, this could actually be a career for me? So like I said, I come from corporate. I was an accountant for six years. I was a young mom. So it was like, you're good with numbers. It pays well. Get it done. <laughs> That's what you basically do, right? Especially in my culture. You know, I'm, I'm 
from Puerto Rico, Caribbean. It's just like a woman just gets a job and works nine to five. And that's what you do. Mm. I never fit the mold. But as I'm in accounting, I started to feel like there was something that I needed to, to, to change. This wasn't for me and it wasn't fulfilling me. So I turned 30 and I started this blog called Shit I'm 30. My dad had just passed mm. away and I'm like, oh, what year was this? I, this was 2017. Oh, man, starting a blog in 2017. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I needed to. It was more like a journal, honestly. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm going to just put it out there. I usually do it on Instagram and the business side of me. I'm like, well, maybe I can monetize this somehow, some way other than just putting it out there on videos or talking to friends or maybe going live, whatever it was. So I did the blog. That didn't last long. I realized that, you know, can we curse on here? Can we curse on here? Fuck yeah. Go for it. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there, I would put like the fucks in like all caps and a bunch of exclamation marks. And it's like, oh, what the hell? Shit. It wasn't giving what I needed to give. Although a lot of people were resonating with it. Like, oh, we love this. When's the next one coming out? But I'm like, it, I was still itching. Like there's something that's not, I, I need to say my fucks better. You know, I really need you to know. Because sometimes you read something <laughs> and it's, it doesn't, it doesn't translate the way I wanted it to translate. So I yeah, was like avid. reading it versus saying it out loud. Yeah, she was like a text gotcha. message. You ended up arguing with your man because he said something and he meant it in a different way. But we were already mad and we read it in a different way. So mm-hmm. when you hear it, it's different. So I went ahead and um, started listening to pods. I already did that for years in accounting. You do nothing but sit behind a desk and crunch numbers. So audiobooks and podcasts were my thing from 7 a.m. until nighttime. You know, mm-hmm. so all day long, that's what I would do. So I then started teaching myself because how do you get a podcast on iTunes? I'm not famous. I literally live in Disney World, Orlando. I have a kid. I'm just, I, I don't know any of this. I'm not in the entertainment space. So I started to teach myself. It took about six, seven months, bought so much equipment that I didn't need. But I figured I became yeah. an engineer myself. I had a Surface, uh, you know, those pads. Tablet? Yeah, a tablet. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, so much equipment, Mindy. You're not going to, like, I spent so much. I'm like, my poor little chick. I believe it because I've seen it happen. Yes, it, <laughs> yes. because when you go through the rabbit hole of Google, there's all these gurus telling you what to do. So I had to just learn trial and error. Started the podcast um, March 2018. So it'll be five years now. And um, was it, it always it, idea to launch? What was it? No, no. So it was called Shit, I'm 30. I just switched the oh. blog onto the pod. Shit, I'm 30. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. And within eight weeks, my actual idea <laughs> to launch is the pod that it's kind of like a branch it just has a few episodes of like tidbits on how to podcast but Mm -hmm. it was shit i'm 30 and now it's called pivot with purpose um so shit i'm 30 was on the charts and i always say with oprah right under oprah within eight weeks i was like me and her besties you're right (laughs) um but you know that it was a big deal back then right i'm like i don't know what i'm doing i'm in, in in my daughter's playroom literally i kicked her out and i'm like this is a studio now so we I did that and just kept going right it was audio I had a friend my friend's like I don't really like this I kept going on my own and from there I realized specifically that people of color were asking me how do I start I don't have the money to spend ten thousand dollars for someone to teach me how to do my own podcast so I started testing out Mm -hmm. um how to launch a podcast in 30 days so I would charge like 49 bucks for an hour and I would give them the whole rundown and help them I did this for a while then I started the academy which is where um I then taught people everything I knew you know now I know what equipment to use now I know how to simplify it so I made it very simple for us to just start because you can make it very difficult Mm -hmm. then the pandemic hit and I've been doing this now for a while virtually because again I live in Orlando there's no mecca this is not New York this is not LA like it's there's not much media here so the pandemic hits and um big corporations like iHeart uh, don't know how to simplify things in their home and they don't know what to do. So then I was able to step in and show them, hey, we can do this. And at that time, Riverside wasn't a thing. So it was showing them yeah. how to use Zoom, but without Zoom audio and using the backup audio. And they're like, oh, this is it. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> Pay me now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You oh, so you were consulting it. for some of the networks. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me interrupt you before you get Go too ahead. deep in because um, I love, because I know everyone listening is, and we start to like sort of tell the fast version. It's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so talk to us about choosing the idea for your show. You already had the blog. When did you realize like this is the focus of the show and it's actually resonating with an audience? Because I think some folks will rush in, like they'll think mm-hmm. that they have an idea for a show. They'll do the show without actually like testing or seeing if there's an audience for it, especially if you're not, like you said, a celebrity who has a built in right. fan base, you know, so talk a little bit about that and 
I also hear that your show pivoted over time. Now it's pivot with purpose. So right. yeah, t tell people who are wondering, what's the thing? How do I know that people are going to resonate with this? How you sort of- So I did some things focus. right. And I did some things now looking back that weren't the best. What I did okay. do was, um, I come from a business background, right? So I remember doing a lot of like customer avatars and knowing who my target audience is for business. So I figured I needed to know that for the pod as well. So although it was called Shit, I'm 30 and everything, I still remember my spiel. It's like getting rid of society's expectations about where you should be in your 30s as a woman of color when you turn mm -hmm. 30. And that's where I stayed. And I talked about parenting and career and relationships, everything, but through the lens of a woman of color turning 30, trying to figure out what to do. So I was very intentional with my content. It's like, oh, but you talk about everything. Yes, but no. I talk about what I'm going through, but it's in a very linear way, right? I don't kind of, I didn't deviate from that. Mm -hmm. um, and my guests also were very aligned with that. So that's when, that was my, my test essentially. And that's why I believe everyone kept coming back because whoever liked episode one, two, and three also liked four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right. And that's some, I think a lot of people that want to start a pod where they fall is, oh, I want to, it's a, for everybody. It's for all black women. It's for all <laughs> men. No, it's not. We're not yeah. monolithic. We're, all, we're not all the same. So why would you put me in the same category as, uh, what's her name? Candace. But moving right along, we're not all the same. So mm -hmm. that thing, that's the very first thing. Now, one of the things that I think I did wrong was choosing that name. So although I was very, uh, I was sad. I was anxious about turning 30. I'm not where I'm supposed to be like in society and in my family. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I should settle down, get married, have more kids, have the white picket fence, you know, just stay home after five o'clock, do whatever you have to do for your husband. It wasn't me. And I felt trapped in my 30s. But then as I got to my 34, 35, I'm like, oh, I like it here. <laughs> yep. I like it a lot. You can't, can't nobody tell me nothing. I'm not a kid. I'm not too old. I, I love who I'm becoming. So that's when I pivoted and I started really finding out what my purpose was through the podcast. It was, I enjoyed speaking, but at the same time, I started finding my passion and my purpose through storytelling and helping others. And I'm like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. And that's when, with the help of the community of the podcast, we came up with Pivot With Purpose um, mm. because I didn't know where to take it. But I believe also the name is very important because you'll get yeah. to a point where you're like, oh, does this still fit who I am today? We are forever evolving. Who I was when yeah. Shit I'm 30 started is 100% not who I am today. So we have to be able to evolve with our podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hard to like, for, it's impossible to foresee into the future where you're going to be. Um, I think we got lucky because Brian Ambition has just, it never gets old. It never is stale. Right. Um, I do remember in the early days, someone saying like someone who also was launching a podcast, like, well, are you afraid of alienating people with the title? And feeling a little bit like I was confident, but also she made me think twice. And of course, now, like, of course, we want it to be called this, you know, this is who we are, who we want to speak to, and it's okay to be specific and be, you it's know, niche down in that way. Um, and also what I'm hearing is like, it's okay for you to change your mind and to change the title of a show. And I've seen this happen. Like I was on someone's podcast and they, it was one title and then they were launching a book and they're like, okay, so we're going to change the name of the podcast now to the name of the book. And it was like planned out. Um, and when you do that, like, are you able, nothing changes, like you can keep the same you know, home on Apple, the same links, all that stuff, Absolutely. you know, on the technical side. So you don't have to actually lose any like ground you've made in terms of placement on the charts and things like that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, you absolutely can. Know. All you have to change it, the art, basically what's called an RSS feed. It stays the same. Mm -hmm. You just update your artwork, you update your description. Everything stays there, depending, of course, okay. on what media host you use. Um, but you can keep everything the same. All your subscribers will not go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, man, you said hosts. I mean, when we launched Brown Ambition, our host used to be Libsyn. And I remember okay. like teaching myself how to use that. What was your first host? I still use Libsyn. I you use still Art use Libsyn. 19 and Libsyn. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Yeah, Libsyn is one of the OGs. But now there's several more, you know. Oh, in, there's out so there. many. That, yeah. Libsyn has been around since the beginning of podcasting. But there is Art19. There is Buzzsprout. There is Spreaker. Um, just, I, one I don't recommend is Anchor. If you are serious about podcasting, I know Anchor okay. hates me since Clubhouse days. <laughs> I am very opinionated, Clubhouse. but I 
Do R. not. R. Um, <laughs> Clubhouse was amazing for those like three months. <laughs> um, I made a lot of money at Clubhouse. Just talking about podcasting because it became so big during that time, you know, and people didn't know what to do. But if you're taking this seriously and you really want it to eventually be a business, I'm all about owning your IP, owning your content and everything that's free comes at a cost. Hmm. Everything. Oh, that's the thing. And when it, yeah, yep. even Libsyn's, so, I think Libsyn, I could start with like five, 15 bucks, something like that. It depends mm-hmm. on like, like how many dollars a month. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what else when those are in those early days, when you said that you got a bunch of equipment, did everything wrong? Like if someone's starting out today, what would be, I know it's in my starter kit, but what would be in your starter kit for a podcaster? All you need is a Samsung Q2U. Uh, mic. What's that? It's literally a $69 microphone. It's you plug it in straight to your computer. Is that but what I have? I'm is, like, what's that? No, you probably have a shore. <laughs> it looks like a shore. I have I a shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is like, I, you probably have the MV7. I have a shore mic as well. Like this one will run you about $250 and it'll be XLR and can also just go directly to your computer. You can choose if you grow, you can grow with it. But the same yeah. thing with a Samsung, it has for you to be able to put it straight to your computer. So all you need is your computer and your microphone. That's yep. it. And then something like this Riverside or Squadcast or Zencaster that records, you know, interviews or yourself by your or you by yourself, your audio and your video. And boom, you have a full studio at your house with your computer and your microphone. That's all you need. Of yep. course, there are productions that cost ten, twelve thousand dollars a month to make, but it's not necessary to get you off the ground. Yeah. Talk to me about the production side, like obviously in those early days, um, like us, I'm sure you edited the show yourself and like mm-hmm. behind the scenes uploaded it yourself. Um, how did you what what did you use to learn how to edit? Did you already have some familiarity with like audio editing or did you teach yourself that? Girl, I didn't even know how to plug <laughs> in the, the cable box. Okay. <laughs> like if my cable went down, I'm calling Spectrum. And then they're like, can you do this? No, send someone right now. I don't want to yeah. touch the cables. I YouTube University. Yep. was where I, I was went and got my that. degree. Yeah, YouTube, anyone, when I get DMs from people, it's like, how do I do this or how do I do that? I won't answer those. If you give me a specific question, hey, I have my XLR cord and this is not working or whatever, then I'll answer that question because there's so much information on YouTube oh, for so much. free, for free. Yes. I have literally, I've been producing some of the biggest podcasts. We're talking about 2 million downloads a month off of Audacity, which is also free. And where did I I learn how to do Audacity? On YouTube. Literally. (laughs) And it's free on a Mac. It's free on a PC. You don't have you don't have to have a huge computer. Again, I said in the beginning, I started with a Surface tablet. That's all I had. I didn't even Mm -hmm. I mean, I had my work computer, but and I would use that to the Lenovo from work. (laughs) I ended up getting fired from accounting. It's fine. Um, <laughs> specifically don't job. record your podcast on your work computer though just you know don't don't as don't aside. do it <laughs> um i would do a lot of research on there and then record on the surface so all of my yeah. research and my outlines were on my laptop and then i would use all the stuff but literally all you need is your computer your microphone something like riverside Squadcast, zencaster and just get started yeah yeah i think that's the hard part is starting it is because Many people go in it without a plan. What is your plan? What is, what's your why? Why are you doing this? Who are you impacting? Once they leave your podcast, what are you leaving them with? Because just because you have cool conversations with your friends does not mean you need to have it on a podcast. So there are a lot of podcast gurus out there that are like, everybody needs a podcast. Like Oprah, you get a podcast, you get a podcast. No, shut up. They don't. And now we're seeing how everyone should not be on a pod. And I truly believe the power of the tongue. We're so powerful with the things that we say and the influence that we can create and the people that are listening that could be very easily influenced. So just be very careful with what you're saying, because once you get on this microphone, I feel like we should have a duty on what we say and how we say it. Yeah. And to whom you're speaking, like being able to define. I feel like if you can't define your person, like how old are they? Where do they live? What Mm -hmm. apps are on their phone? You know, what kind of shows do they enjoy? What are are they struggling with? Like actually being able to personify your audience and like what and always center them. I think that's one of the best things we did at, at BA was, of course, our personalities, our personal stories infuse the show with color and all that. But we never forgot about her. You know, we never forgot about our listener. And who did you she have was. a name for her? Uh, no, actually, no. Oh, <laughs> I my. mean, Fortunately, okay. we have so many people submitting questions. We, we have like real names now. You know, we think about I think about um, uh, 
dang it, there's so many that just have over the years, they're always sending questions and, and encouraging words. But we never forget about what the brown and black woman's experience is and what she's going through and how the news, what about the news is stressing her out and like, how can we, you know, help comfort and provide some insights um, into everything that has to do with her pocketbook and her career. Um, so that's such a good point that you made for sure. Also, yeah, shout out to GarageBand. Exercise. Uh, Sorry, go yes. Ahead. No, free also. <laughs> I use GarageBand <laughs> and you're going to die. I used to use GarageBand. I had a Yeti mic because everyone had a Yeti mic, you know. Oh, I hate and the Yeti mics. I know. I mean, they're terrible. <laughs> they're like, awful. They're, they're, they're the model such, of podcasting. Yeah. That's it. They have such bad, like, you pick up so many different background noises. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Um, anyway, anyway, yeah. So I used um, Apple earbuds. Plus, they're not portable. Yetis are heavy. And I would be going into the mm-hmm. city. So I literally would use Apple earbuds and a laptop um, and GarageBand. And I would, you know, rock that out for years. Like, I'm probably until the pandemic, until I was forced to stay home because it was yeah. the portable, functional. And we used to use Skype back in the day. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it was a thing. Skype and Zoom were a thing. It was mm-hmm. no Squadcast back in 2015. Okay. Nope. Um, okay. So we covered some technical stuff. And I want to talk to you about one of the other questions that I get frequently from anyone wanting to start a show is, and then how do I tell people about it? Like, how do people find the show? You started the show, you know, not long after your blog, right? So about a year mm-hmm. after you launched your blog. Did you no, already have? Literally, I only had like seven blog posts and I was like, oh, okay, off to audio we go. Lowercase b blog. Got it. <laughs> yes. Very all of it. Tiny, like 10. People get really <laughs> caught up in like, but you know, the same thing that Yahoo was caught up in, which is like, but is anyone going to listen? And I feel like mm-hmm. for us, we had to not care about that for a while I mean, of course you care, but like we, you can't make that the reason for doing it because it right. takes, in my experience, I found it takes time to build that loyalty, that trust, mm-hmm. you know? So talk to me about your show and how you grew it and if and you're, there was any strategy that particularly worked for you. Yeah. So back then there was no video. Well, I didn't have video, right? It was mm-hmm. audio only, but then I knew about audiograms. So I would create these audiograms with clips of the show on social media Again, I had maybe a thousand followers back then. If I got 20 likes, this is my, my favorite joke. I'm such a like dad jokes person. I'm like, if I got 20 likes on a picture, I was like, oh my God, Kim Kardashian, watch out. You know, yeah. I thought I was popping with 20 likes on social media, <laughs> right? So I had these audiograms and that's what I would do. Create clips and just push them out constantly. On and social. I do remember some people saying, oh my God, you're always posting about your podcast. Okay, unfollow. That's yeah. fine. I'm gaining more than what I'm losing. So how will they find you? You have to be your number one fan. You really do. If you start thinking about what other people might think about your little podcast, or you think, uh, that's when you have to literally put your blinders on. And unfortunately, I will say, um, I, don't, I don't know if this is in every community, but definitely for ours, our biggest supporters are not our family and friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially in the beginning. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. The little packet? Oh, what you know? Oh, you think you're on iTunes? Oh, you think you're big man? Oh, what's what is that doing? Are you making any money? You can't go out with us anymore because you're recording. Yes, because I'm passionate about it, and you will know if you're passionate about what you're talking about and what you're doing when you have to pass up on brunch, or you have to pass up on a on a friend's vacation because like you know I have to record X amount of pods, or I need to learn how to do this, or I have to work on my outline, or I have to edit whatever that is. For two and a half years, I wore all the hats. You know, mm-hmm. marketing, graphic design, editing, engineer, like all of it was just me until the pandemic when I found, you know, my uh, May, who's amazing and still work with her. But we, you know, I, I needed to end with her. I was like, I- I'm going to give you four episodes and um, do it for free. And I want to see what you can do. What did May and do? I- edit? Yes. Edit. And the very yeah. first one was mid pandemic on my birthday. And it was Charlemagne. And she goes into the Zoom and she's like, what? And I'm like, girl, don't ask any questions. We just got to get this done. Everything went wrong. Internet was going down. We were doing it on a hot spot, which didn't break by the grace of God at all okay. during the this entire is hour. Me. I'm just listening to the story. So you're interviewing Charlemagne? Yes. Oh, okay. And I am terrified because I've been, now I've been trying to get this forever, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 one day. Yeah, yeah, one day. Finally, the day yeah. comes and I got you on here because the, the world shut them down. So now you're sitting down. <laughs> you have nothing but time. It's May 2020 and my internet's not working. My internet mm. works every day, all day. Mm-hmm. But we made it work without a hiccup. And from then I knew, 
oh, like she's as dedicated as I am. And we spent, she hasn't left my side since. Yeah. The, what, like the key for me with you talking about showing up, skipping things, you know, being really serious about it is if you're treating it like something you pick up and put down, Mm -hmm. it's almost like why bother? Because consistency is so key, like showing up when you say you're going to show up for your audience, so they rely Mm -hmm. on you. How did you build that cadence? Like, for example, with Brown Ambition, we started recording, I think in the early days, we, we aired every Tuesday, and then we switched to Wednesday. You know, we didn't make very many changes over eight years. Um, and now we do two shows a week, you know, consistently Ooh. Wednesday and Fridays, um, which we record on one day. So talk to me about deciding the cadence. And we are week, we are, we never miss a week. Like we have something new every week and we chose that life for some reason. I can't remember, but <laughs> it's the life that we have now. <laughs> but we, we show up, you know, we say we're going to show up. So how did you decide? Your cadence. So if you're listening and you're like, I just don't have time. This is too much. I was an accountant. Close week, I would be there from 7 a.m. to sometimes midnight to do it again the next day. Uh, bulk recording was my friend for sure. I would sit down, but I chose weekly. I knew that I have to, if someone wants, to, it's just like a relationship. You got to show mm-hmm. up. When you start sh- not showing up or being some timey, then I'm not going to invest any time, any money, any anything into you. So I was showing up yeah. weekly. There were times there. I remember one time specifically, I had nothing in the bank. And by that, I mean, no episodes that were recorded extra. And the audio somehow, some way was like distorted. It was really weird. Mm. Like none of the audio I've worked. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it, it made no there. sense. Sometimes with tech, you just have, there, it doesn't, you can't explain it. Yeah. So I was, I had to be to work the next day at six o'clock, wake up my daughter, take her to school. Like I'm a single mom. So I stayed up until like three o'clock in the morning and recorded a solo episode for I think it was like a 30 minute episode. But at the end of the day, I showed up and yeah. that episode ended up having the most downloads I had had to date because I showed up and I was real and wrong. I'm like, listen, this is not supposed to be the episode, but I have an outline and we're going to talk about it. And I did some research and at two, three in the morning, I'm recording it, editing it and putting it out. But definitely mm. I chose weekly. I have clients that tell me, oh, what about biweekly? And I'm like, mm, no. What about once a month? Eh, Especially today, that won't cut it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know how anyone can do it with less than once, at least once a week. At least. And I love the fact that we went to two. The strategy behind that was shorter episodes because we love the content of our show, but we were paying attention to um, engagement rates throughout the duration of the show, which now factors a lot into like rankings and things like that. Um, so for us, it was like, let's break off a chunk of the show and make it all about our listeners. So BA Q&A was born on, you know, we do that on Fridays and then Wednesday we have the main show. Um, but yeah, you got to have that. I remember that consistency, that dedication. <laughs> like there were times when um, it was always me and I'd be the one because, you know, Tiffany could just show up. Bless her. But I knew and I, I knew that about our relationship. We were t- we were a duo and I knew Tiff's only going to do this if I'm handling the tech side. So like, let me show up for that. But I also was learning. And there was there was like one time more than one time when like my audio would be screwed up. And I'd literally go home, listen to her audio and just have a conversation with her, like, (laughs) like, pretend like it was live, just to get my side of the conversation sweating bullets like the whole time. Um, yeah, it's not- that shows your dedication, though, right? And the fact that you were there to show up even when you're not making any money. Some of this yeah. time, you're not going to be making any money. But what you will see is that when you're showing up, you have an impact on someone. If you're doing it right and if you're really passionate about what you're talking about and if you find that to be your purpose, go for yeah. it. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, my course specifically, the Launcher Podcast in 30 Days, I always talk about because she now works with you, um, Imani. She took that course in the beginning. Yeah, you know, she to told start me. her own path, to start her own pot. And she's one <laughs> of many now who oh, are what now producers for big, you know, Webby now right, and winning podcasts and they can do A, B and C. All, everyone at the agency for me has gone through Idea to Launch. All my editors, all my producers, they've all gone through and they're like, well, what, what school do you have? None. Again, YouTube University. I was an accountant. Yeah. But I um, I was able to put the work in and teach someone and podcasting can take you in so many different directions, so many different directions. Once you get started and find what you love about it, you might fall in love with the back end of it, which is editing or video or coming up with outlines or scripting. You never know what you will love about it until you start. 
Hey, BA fam, creating visual content for a brand is honestly an essential part of what we do, especially to keep y'all posted on what we're up to and to keep you engaged with everything we have going on at Brown Ambition. But it's not that easy to create the content that we put out there. Ever since I found Canva for Teams, however, it has made it so easy to collaborate and design with our social media manager, which makes the whole process more creative and honestly, more fun because I get to sit back and trust that the team has got it. Canva for Teams streamlines how we do social media, how we plan, create, and share the content. Plus they have a video editor that is so easy to use that has tons of filters, animations, everything you need to bring your group's content to life. MBA fam, y'all can collaborate with Canva for Teams too. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you go to canva.me slash brownambition. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash brownambition for a free 45-day extended trial. Canva.me slash brownambition. So today, Pivot with Purpose, can you talk about how the show's direction, like the the tone, the focus of the show has changed since you a lot i would say pivoted i was trying not it, to use the word pivot but it was <laughs> it, it, it's the word shifting <laughs> pivoting like however the the word became like a thing a couple of years back but it just fit for me i was like i don't want that word but it fit because my life it changed i went from you know when it was shit i'm 30 i'm like i'll never get i have been married before i'll never get married again you know mm. uh there was i'll never have a big one i'll never have another child ever 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 like i was gonna be a one and done i'm gonna travel the world go to italy have my boobs out in the sun like that was gonna be my life <laughs> but i was gonna be the rich auntie because she was gonna be 18 and then we'd kick her out of my house well i fell in love and chose <laughs> to get off birth control and have a child like the as heavy a decision side. like damn it <laughs> and then <sighs> he fuck. came along <laughs> this is the one where you can do it in a blog where you gotta be like fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i did all that got engaged uprooted my entire my kids moved to new jersey did the whole thing and it didn't work out and it didn't work out and the big thing about that was that i was already living in my purpose i just had to pivot I just had to pivot when most of us would crumble and just say, you know what, I, why did this happen to me? I chose to lean into me and my children and not, you know, settling there. So now what I do is I talk a lot about my experiences and I bring people onto the pod that can inspire you in a way with, you know, humor and, and whatever else. But now it's like, oh, how do we go from what you went through to where you are now? Because there's so many women and men, which is crazy. I have a, a big male listenership but i think it's because i know i carry like a lot of testosterone <laughs> um <laughs> Embrace that, it. that just you have to watch someone there's so many people that i've watched like you guys being one that i'm like oh my god look at where they are i want to be there i want to be in those rooms let me listen to them let me learn from you and we are very much so accessible through podcasting mm -hmm. so it's like listen to us and you'll find ways to engage with us where we are and you'll learn more and that's what i found with pivot with purpose it's like i can still be me there's a lot of things that haven't changed about me, but at the same time, it's like, how do I go through adversity and how do I choose to pivot every time? Because it's not just the one time. It's not just the baby. It's not just the broken engagement. It's been family issues. It's been money or career, all these different things. It's like, it's my journey with other women or men that have been able to do it themselves and kind of encourage you. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for a really hard life, then try to avoid pivoting. Try to... Mm assume that there will be a clear and linear path for you. Um, I think one of the great lessons of my life was learning how to pivot at a very young age and sort of being, I mean, of course you're yanked in different directions by circumstances right. you're a child, but man, I'm so grateful because as an adult, like things don't really phase me in the sense that, oh, something big is changing. Okay. I'm just going to go in this direction now from you know, being a journalist to pivoting into marketing and then pivoting out of corporate altogether to running my career coaching business. I mean, it's such a powerful, it's when people resist the pivot or yes. don't give themselves permission. Like they can feel it. It's, and, and I'm sure in your work and in mine too, it's about encouraging and giving people the confidence that you deserve like a different chapter 
and you can give yourself permission to pursue it. Is that as you're saying this, I'm sure your audience is like, oh, but she's just so confident. But it's Mandy. Mandy is just yeah. so good at doing it. And it's like, I don't know about you because I won't speak on you. Only listen but since day me, one if you're thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I There are days that I don't get out of my bed. There are days that I'm just like, God, um, take me down. You know, I quit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this anymore. Even with, you know, one of my larger pods because they grew so fast. No, for sure would be Simone and Megan. And I'll say this now because she just said it at the live show. Uh, she's like, there's so many times I wanted to quit. And I said, well, amen, because there are plenty of times that I've as successful as it's been early on. I don't want to do this anymore. It's just too much. And this and that. It's a lot of work. But you even on those days when you don't want to keep going, you have to find it in you. You have to do it scared. You have to do it when you're tired. Just get it done and it'll pay off eventually. I can't tell you when because sometimes it takes years. There's things for me that I have been, you know, staying constant with and it took years. I mean, I I didn't get into radio. All I wanted was radio back in 2018. That's all I wanted. I'm Ah, on air. Interesting. Yeah, I wanted radio you wanted the grandfather so of podcasting. Bad. And now you work yeah. in radio. Tell me about what, yeah, tell me about today. What's yes. Carla up to? So you have the, yeah. you have the academy, of course, but still you have like what? You've worked full time as a the, radio producer? Well, I have the academy and I have the agency where we now have about seven or eight pods that we produce fully. And then we oh, also okay. launch for people. And then once we get the full launch going, your entire concept, then they can take it and, and edit it and produce it themselves. Where are um, you in 2015? So, <laughs> crunching Somewhere numbers behind a desk from seven to 12 <laughs> yeah so, okay, literally I, it turned out fine but it would have been nice and you know Carla, what i also listened nice. to the serial <laughs> podcast absolutely but yeah. we're here now um yes. so 2018 when i first quit i just i actually quit because i knew i was getting the radio job so it was a big station okay. here called xl 1067 and i just knew i was gonna get the job i'm on air and everything i got this mandy me absolutely got it yeah psych I quit in October. February is when they're supposed to make the the decision, and I didn't get it. The job I was didn't. for what? An on air personality? Yeah, on air. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I it was it's a, a morning show. It was a morning show. One yeah. of the biggest morning shows here in Orlando. So I was like, how did I not get that? So then I really went hard on the podcasting part and just kept going and kept going. And um, now twenty twenty two, when I come back from Jersey and I let go of that relationship and you know how I was bringing me down and I had to walk back in my purpose. I come mm-hmm. home and without looking for it, I get the phone call and it's like, Oh, we're starting a morning show. You know, I did the show for radio and I'm like, I'm good. And they're like, no, no. I'm like, I'm good. I already have my agency going. I have my Academy going. I'm all right. And radio puts all these restrictions on you that I don't yeah. want. Cause now Talk at this point, all these years curse. later, <laughs> My program director won't give me a dump button. And every week he's like, Carla. And I'm like, give me your dump button. <laughs> Quick shit will slip out. <laughs> but yeah, they called in 2022. And I, as I the same network? it at first, um, it's actually their JVC Broadcasting. So it's an independent broadcasting company. Uh, okay. And I'm with some of the biggest talents, Ricky Padilla, DJ Nasty, who goes on tour with Beyonce. He's DJ Khaled's like big talents. And I'm like, what do you want me on there for? Right. And mm-hmm. they're like, they want off of my clips, my podcast. That is it. The fact that I've been showing up weekly, there were people that noticed that. Yeah, Just showing up. And I got the job. People don't get that. A morning show at that. I fucking love that so much because you have to do the work and not understand the end goal. Like not sometimes not understand how the story is going to end or where it's going to take you, but the faith to continue to share your voice to do the thing that you want to be doing by yourself, Mm -hmm. like, you know, because you believe in yourself, how else are people going to know, you know, how else are people going to find you if you're not making yourself findable? So hell yeah. Whether it's podcasting or Instagram or blogging or whatever it is that you do, keep showing up because in 2018, I really thought it was over. I didn't think about radio again, but I created my own lane with mm-hmm. my podcast, created my own lane. I did retreats with women. Um, we have like, we would do a Patreon. We have virtual, what did we call them? Oh my God, you might, you know this. Pajama parties. Once a month, we would go in our robes and on Zoom and we would do book club, <laughs> all these things. I just kept showing up. I kept doing things for my community to where mm-hmm. finally they noticed and they're like, we need her. And then at that time, I had the leverage. This is mm-hmm. what I want and this is how I'm going to do it. And now they're like, oh, but you're now working corporate again. I am, but I have a business that they're very aware of. And I'm like, I got to go for a week. And I go, 
I have mm. a production in New York. Give me the, the equipment and I will broadcast. I have broadcasted now from Miami. I have broadcasted from New York, from LA, from Atlanta, because I'm working my own personal business, which they have no ownership of or restrictions on me. Uh, but it was because I created my own space. Very unusual. But yeah. at the end of the day, I created my own lane to, in order to be able to have that leverage. And a lot of us really depend sometimes on what others can give us. Even in podcasting, like, oh, we want to deal first. Start on your own. Figure yeah. out what you could do. Start on your own first. Really invest into yourself first and see where that goes. Yeah. When did you start to, well, pivot with purpose. When did you start to court advertisers and were you doing that on your own? So let's talk about monetization because mm -hmm. for Brown Ambition, it's been pretty straightforward. We've sold ads since about 2018. So I guess like three, four years into the journey. Um, and we partnered with an agency to do that. But talk to me about your experience with monetizing and any advice you I have for people who get stressed. I started and I tell okay. everyone to start with affiliate marketing. My first one was Audible. So I would get 15 bucks every time someone used the code. So you better believe I had a pre-roll and a mid-roll for that $15. Okay. I wanted it. I wanted it yeah. bad. That's a good entry so point because it's not so hard. Like if you really use something or you like it. Correct. They do like a lot of places have affiliate programs if you just Google. So yeah. Many. So many right now. One of my biggest um, affiliates is BetterHelp. You know, I, they do mm. just ads, but I actually make more money as an affiliate. So I'm like, yeah. I'll keep it as an affiliate for right now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Let's not do CPM, but affiliate program. Anything that you use on a daily basis for your pod, like if you guys were finance, I'm not sure you know. I know you're on a network now, but you're finance, and let's say you are QuickBooks. It's something that you use all the time. You can get an affiliate. Like right now, you might not have. QuickBooks or the numbers for a, a main sponsorship, but they have affiliate programs mm -hmm. and you can get that or HoneyBooks has affiliate programs. So it depends what you're in. If you're like a DJ podcast, is there a DJ equipment that you can contact them and say, Hey, for every sale that I make with this code, I get back X amount. So that is the easiest way and how I started monetizing the pod. Then I went to local businesses. I had an attorney, a real estate person that would buy ads for $75 oh. an ad. And it was local. And I'm like, hey, this is realtor. I also had an attorney that uh, because I talked about and I had my daughter and I was dealing with a lot of uh, with child support and in my divorce at that time in 2017. I had just finished it. Mm -hmm. Had an attorney. Since I talked about it, I'm like, oh, and if you need here in Central Florida someone for your child support or whatever it might be, this is the attorney for you. Boom. 50 to to $100 an ad. Mm -hmm. So you're, have, even your, like, your focus was local in the beginning too. Local, yep. And anything digital. Yeah. That could be for anyone. Okay. So and and I would pitch myself. Just like cold email. Cold emails. Yeah. See? You guys are waiting for her to be like, and then I had the magic idea. But there is no cheat code. It's just no. and and some people think the cheat code is hiring out for help. And no. I can't think of a worse trap. In the sense that if you are not clear, like you said, on who your audience is, what your show is about what you want to say, all that, you know, point of view, format, things like that, it can quickly sort of spiral. It, I don't know, just become something that you never wanted to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, if you're even lucky enough to make money that way. Outsourcing is now I, I wish I had outsourced the gym and someone would take my body and take me to the gym. I, I outsource nice. everything, but there are two <laughs> things that we can outsource. And that is like our physical health and our mental health. We got to do it ourselves. But everything else, I am a fan of outsourcing everything, but at the right time. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you're outsourcing. Yes, I outsource now my editing, my video and all that, but I was doing that all myself yeah. at one point. So if at some point, whoever it is, their mama dies or dog dies or they just want to quit because they're irresponsible, I can pick up that slack. And you kind of know how you want it done. So I definitely will say, learn how to do everything yourself first and then outsource. That works for mm. most people. There are some that are like, hey, I got the budget. Take it on with the agency, right? That's why I have the academy and I have the agency. The academy is everyone that wants to do it on their own. You know, I can launch it. The agency is like, hey, I have the budget. Help me get it done and let's just put it out there. Yeah. And for folks who are wondering and have the question, well, how do I determine how much an ad is? You mentioned CPM, which is, it's just it's cost per thousand, even though it's cost per million, right? Like whatever, it means mm -hmm. like the Same dollar amount like that. per thousand listeners, you can mm -hmm. estimate that you're gonna deliver. So let's say an ad is a hundred dollars, you know, for every thousand listeners that we have. You're the accountant, so you can probably do that 
math. <laughs> well, the CPM is actually in the end in this industry specifically is twenty five to thirty five dollars is their CPM. So for every thousand mm. downloads, it's thirty five dollars. So some people are like, oh my god, it's such a lucrative business. When it comes yeah, to no. sponsorship, <laughs> the top one percent is the ones that are making money. Honestly, yeah. so you have to have a hundred thousand downloads to get thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah. The average I think we started podcast. to monetize when we got to 50K. When we could mm-hmm. consistently get 50K per month, that's when an advertiser was like, oh, I mean, an agency was like, okay, we'll sell ads for you. Yep. Um, and 50,000 is not easy to do. The hell no. Average, listen, it took years. The average, yes. <laughs> the average is 152 downloads. Wow. The average podcast gets between 150 to 200 downloads an episode. And if you're there, mm-hmm. Be really proud that you're there. And with that, just imagine, I tell everyone as I'm teaching, imagine walking every single week into an auditorium with 150 people. You're popping. I love that. And yes, I do that too. If you can, if you're walking every Monday into a room with 150 people that are showing up for you, you're doing Mm -hmm. a great job. Now, how are you going to monetize those 150 people? Now they're showing up. Now they really trust you. Create something for them. Start selling and don't be scared to sell. They want to buy. They literally want to buy from you because they want to support you. Do it. Get it done. Don't feel scared about your friends and your family being like, oh my God, who's going to buy from you? You're just pookie <laughs> from the corner. No, you. these people really do love you despite of what anyone else may think. Get Start providing products and services or retreats or groups or you know whatever it may be that you can monetize, whether it's $10 a month to 50 bucks a month, whatever it may be, monetize that a hundred people before you get to 50,000. Yes. Have a plan to your point, have a strategy. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, um, it's important to think about what's the infrastructure, like what are the bones of this operation? Mm -hmm. Cause you don't want it. Like you said, like if you wait until you get there to whatever that, to whatever there is, whatever goal you have, right? then and like all those people that you could have, you know, had b- built a deeper relationship with and monetize all that all that time that can now be even more, you know, have even more trust for you and, and be more on your side and, and jumping on products that you're offering, like you're kind of leaving that on the table. Um, mm-hmm. And then you're just not ready either. Then it's like, oh, wait, I need a strategy. Um, and it's like, and yeah, it it's literally leaving money on the table. I have a pod like, um, no, for sure, who gets easily 250,000 an episode on a regular week, right? Then mm-hmm. I also have pods like Chingona Revolution, which is Erica Cruz. She's a, a, a business coach, essentially. She has this community. So we use it as a lead generator. She just had a launch, $90,000 launch. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, oh my God, but she's, her pod is not like crazy. Her social media, I think she only has like 20 some odd thousand followers. How did she do that? She keeps showing up. And we produce her stuff and we have ads in her podcast and she has extra mini episodes with testimonials we have. So I used to be people be like, oh, you're a podcast coach. I really consider myself a podcast strategist. There's a strategy behind all of this where it doesn't people don't even realize that they're being sold to. And I think that's the gift that I was giving is being able to sell something without making it feel salesy and finding what works for you and what's successful to you. Because to some people is 200,000 downloads to other is 500 but making 90,000 in a launch. Yeah. And investing and, 1200 a month. Yeah, and I to your point about, you know, whether you work with people or you um sell ads on your own or something like that, like what's your take on that when it comes to cuz I've heard from some podcasters who don't have a network and they're selling six figure, you know, um, you know, deals with partners and it's almost like the beauty is that there's no rules. Like you make up the numbers Zero that you rules. want when you're doing mm-hmm. it yourself. Zero rules. No so rules. I've never been with a network. As I have shows with my on- network, shout out to Cumulus and Westwood one, you're great. <laughs> but you know, 35 65 split. You know what I mean? Like they're 35 or 65. That's pretty standard. Um mm-hmm. or yeah. And you know, then Tiff and I split that, you know, 50/50 from there, but um yeah, the sky can be the limit. You know, when you're doing it on Absolutely. your own, there's pros the and cons. Of but podcasting yeah. is that we're an untapped market when it comes like music industry. The, mm. Even streams in the music industry is like it's split this way, blah, blah, blah. Pod, there are no rules to podcasting. There's no right yeah. or wrong way. <laughs> you choose what your value is essentially and what you mm. want to charge. So, you know, success will look very different to everybody in this space. I've never, like I said, I've never been part of a network and I choose the price for my stuff. I said, well, look at my conversion rate, especially with affiliate links. 
Look at what my conversion rate is every time I talk about it. Well, now I want X amount and get that done. And there are deals where it's completely exclusive. There are non-exclusive deals that I also work on where it's like it's a small split, but we can still bring in whatever we want. You can do whatever you want with your podcast. Just have a strategy where it doesn't look crazy, where it it works. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, well, we could do this for hours and hours and hours. But um, Carla, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And and from one self made woman to the next, I think it, your story is super inspirational. And I appreciate you sharing it with thank Brown you. Ambition. Where can people find you and find out all the amazing work that you're doing? So Carla Will Maris, and I know the name. Um, the last name would have been even worse. Um, Carla you said Will Puerto Maris, Rican. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, the Maris. <laughs> Wilmaris. Yeah, that's literally what it is. Wilmaris. <laughs> Wilmaris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, go for mm-hmm. it. That's exactly what it is. So Carla Wilmaris. Um, on all social platforms, I have my podcast, Pivot with Purpose, where I speak on, you know, weekly. Every Monday we have an episode. Tuesday comes out on YouTube. Um, I am on the radio if you're local, Fly1031. And we have an app as well. So I get in the morning show and get in trouble once a week for things that I say, <laughs> but they knew what they were getting themselves into. Okay. And if you're looking to launch a podcast on your own, I have a self-paced course, or if not, you can do a consultation with me as a 20 minute consult. And I kind of, I'll decide, or we will decide if we're good for each other. I don't, mm-hmm. if you have an idea and I don't feel close to it, I won't work with you. I would love to take your money, but so many times I'll be like, you know what? I just don't think we're a good fit or whatever it may be. Maybe you should try this instead. I'll give you an idea, but I don't take on everyone, but we can do a constant and say, hey, this this would work for you. Amazing. All right. So you guys know where to find her. We're going to put links to all your good stuff in our show notes as well. All right, BA fam. Again, to Carla, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful insights. Pivot with purpose, y'all. Go check out that show (laughs) ASAP. I know I'm going to. Hey, 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 BA fam. We're on YouTube. Woohoo. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also share the channel with a friend. We're always like, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.